of oil as your filtration device. Ooh, it's hot. I can't express enough how important it is with water procurement to carry some kind of modern container with you, whether that's a stainless steel container or a pot or pan. None of the methods with primitive water procurement are fast and efficient, and a stainless steel container is a must-have. But if you find yourself in a wilderness setting and doing survival, and you don't have some kind of modern container, there are several techniques that you can use, and we're going to show you a couple of improvised methods that will work. The first being a sip well. To do a sip well, all you've got to do is find some kind of standing body of water, and the way a sip well works is you're going to use the soil as a filter. But the one thing to pay attention to is that you don't want to do it in an area that has a lot of animal tracks. That can make a big difference in the overall contamination of the soil because animals tend to like to pee when they drink and they'll contaminate their own water sources. Giardia, also referred to as beaver fever because beaver like to urinate and, and poop in the water sources that they live in, is a you know, disease that causes you know, massive diarrhea, and it can last anywhere from a few days upwards of 40 days. But the upside of most waterborne diseases is that they don't usually affect you in the short term. So if you think that you're going to get out of this survival scenario and you're becoming massively dehydrated, it is better to go ahead and drink water and deal with that later than it is to die of dehydration. But that shouldn't really be an issue because we're going to show you these quick and simple methods that can be used anywhere in the world. And the first method I want to show you is the sip well. The reason we wanted to show you the sip well is because it's essentially a ground container and you can d dig one of these next to any water source in the world and all you're doing is digging down to the water table. And now I have drank out of sip wells hundreds of times uh, without rock boiling these but I have a very strong immune system and you know obviously this is what I do for a living and I don't suggest that you do that. You also have to keep in mind that the bacteria that is down deep in the soil isn't the same stuff that is in uh, the water in the creek here. And that's where the parasites are going to be. You don't have to worry about the same kind of parasites that would affect you from the stream being in here. So, you know, this is not the prettiest method, but if you find yourself in a primitive survival situation where you are having massive dehydration, this is you know, one of your quickest and best bets unless you want to make a coal burn container or have some type of other container that you can rock boil in. So I've let this sip well fill up and it looks fairly dirty right now, but once you uh, drop the hot rocks in or if you were to just let this settle on its own, the water at the top would be clear and you could drink that. Um, but it is definitely optimal to rock boil, so that's what we're going to show you how to do. When digging your sip well, you want to make sure that you build a fire very close to your sip well so that you're not having to go back and forth over long distances. And all I've done is made some tongs here, and all I've done is, is split a stick right down the middle, put a toggle here, and then tied it off on both sides with a piece of cord. And you want to wait till the rocks are almost glowing, and you're just going to drop those in. And you don't even have to get it necessarily to a rolling boil in order for it to be safe. Any water that is pasteurized, meaning you get it over 175 degrees for approximately 15 minutes, is going to be safe. When choosing rocks for rock boiling, you don't want to pick stuff that comes from a creek because any rocks that have been exposed to excessive amounts of moisture will get the moisture inside of them and when you heat them up on the fire, they can explode. So pick rocks from dry areas. Now this is a really down and dirty technique for sure and it's not going to be the, the best tasting water. But once you let this pasteurize for about 10 to 15 minutes, let it get up to 170, 180 degrees and I, ooh, it's hot, you know, and if, if you get the the rocks super glowing red and you fill up most of the hole with them and it will almost boil instantly. Our rocks aren't quite hot enough in this situation but that's just fine. Pasteurizing is good enough to get the job done. 
The great thing about rock boiling is that basically any kind of container or thing that you can use to hold water, you can use rocks in order to boil in it. Uh, one of the things that we teach our students is how to make coal burn containers out of wood, where you essentially burn a hole straight into a piece of wood, fill it with water, and then take the rocks and boil with that. Okay, I'm going to show you how to make a charcoal water filter. This water's good to drink. Okay, I'm going to show you how to make a charcoal water filter. I gathered up a bunch of charcoal from some dead fires around here. This container here is full of it. I also gathered a bunch of pine needles and I chopped them up finely. This container here is full of it. I got two trash bottles. This one conveniently fits inside this one, but that's not necessary, but it will be helpful. So first, we're going to drill a hole in the lid of this bottle with our knife. Do this carefully, don't stab yourself. Just about like that, nothing special. But a lot of times these lids have a piece of rubber inside of it. This one does not, so we don't have to worry about it. But if it does have a piece of rubber inside of it, take it out. Now I'm going to cut the bottom of this bottle off. And I'm going to drop a bundle of pine needles down in there. And I'm going to shove it down in there into that lid. And that's just going to stop the charcoal from getting into your water. That's its only purpose. And it adds flavor. So now we have to fill this up with charcoal. This charcoal is not processed yet, so we have to grind it up. So let's grind it. Charcoal is a pretty amazing substance. It clings to toxins like a magnet. An ounce of charcoal covers about an uh, acre of surface area. So you can filter hundreds of gallons of water in this filter before you need to change the charcoal. Now we're just filling this bottle up with charcoal. I'll put a couple layers of pine in there to mix it up a little bit, but the charcoal is what does the, does the magic. Pine is actually also a disinfectant and it will help clean the water but it won't help clean it so much just by passing through it. It really needs to soak in the pine to, to help, but it will add a little flavor. All right, what I've done here is I put a layer of charcoal, a layer of pine needles, another layer of charcoal, and another layer of pine needles. This filter is ready. All we gotta do now is go get some water. Notice that I have a different container for collecting water than the container that I'm gonna use to gather it. If I use the same container to collect the water that I'm pouring the filtered water into, I just recontaminate it with the bottle. So we're using a different bottle to collect the water than the bottle that we're running the filtered water into. So I'm going to go get some water and I'll show you how this works. Okay, I gathered some water from the creek over here. Notice it's kind of a pale color. That's not necessarily bad, but watch what color it comes as it goes through this. First it's going to be like a grayish black color because that'll be the charcoal. But once that runs through once, we can run water through here again and it'll run through clear. It's a slow process. If your filter filters fast, then you've done something wrong and you're not cleaning your water. The slower it goes, the cleaner your water is getting. And it'll start off fast at first, but as the dust of the charcoal fills all the little gaps, it'll slow down. Notice we're getting a steady drip here. Okay, it looks like the gray water has stopped dripping and the water is now dripping clear. So what I'm going to do is pour this blackish gray water out and start filtering again. And that's just for taste, really. Now this is going to take a while to filter, probably about an hour before this bottle's full. So we'll come back and show you when it's finished. Okay, our filter's done filtering. We got us a nice container. Notice the water is clear, not cloudy anymore. 
This is still dripping a little bit. This water is good, this water is clean. The filter has gotten rid of any pollutants that have been in there. Uh, it's probably filtered out any Giardia, if not all of it, at least most of it, enough that you won't get sick from it. It's definitely filtered out heavy metals, uh, mercury, lead, things like that. This water is good to drink. That's how you do it.